see you guys. Um, at first blush, it's tempting to say that the gallbladder looks like small intestine, in that it appears to have the little finger-like villi sticking up there. Now, there are four basic layers to the gallbladder, just like the other tubular organs of the GI tract, but there are also some major differences. There is going to be a simple columnar epithelium in the mucosal layer. Um, there's also going to be a brush border of microvilli, just like we saw in the small intestine as well. There is going to be connective tissue underlying the epithelium. But what makes this difficult is that there is no muscularis mucosa. Now, if you think about that, if there's no muscularis mucosa, the connective tissue under the epithelium that we would normally call lamina propria becomes the connective tissue of the submucosa. The tissues are the same structurally, so there's no boundary between the two to identify with no muscularis mucosa present. This is where things also get confusing depending on the book that you happen to be reading. Some books say that the gallbladder only has lamina propria connective tissue. Others say that it only has submucosa connective tissue. So that presents kind of a problem. Uh, the good news is he's not going to make you identify those structures. Notice that he did not say label four basic histological layers as an introduction. He's not going to ask you that kind of stuff. Instead, he's only going to be focusing on the mucosal layer. The muscularis externa is what you should have put there, not just muscularis, but muscularis externa and the epithelium. But we can see those other layers if we have a good slide, and unfortunately this one's super pale. adjustment I'm going to make is going to help. So those finger-like projections that are sticking up into the lumen of the gallbladder are actually called rugae, just like we saw in the stomach. Not villi, although they do look like villi. We zoom up in power. <coughs> we'll be able to see the simple columnar epithelium. That area is not half bad. There's some debris somewhere caught in my projection system here that I'm going to have to try and clean out later. It's kind of obscuring things. But you can see this is one rugae kind of lipped over like this. The boundary between the epithelium and the external environment right here, you can see these kind of compressed nuclei. Based on their position, they're close together. There's only one layer of them, so these have to be columnar-shaped cells. Again, on this particular slide, it's really difficult to make out, but there should be some better pictures in your atlas. They're staining a little bit more darkly than that. Uh, what else has he got here? Just mucosa, muscularis, and simple columnar epithelium. But back down to medium power here. It's almost easier to see the epithelium at this magnification. So again, here's one rugae right here. This is the tall columnar epithelium. This would be the connective tissue underneath the epithelium. Again, depending on the book, we could call that lamina propria, or as it extends down into here, it merges with what we would call the submucosa. The muscularis externa in the gallbladder is not super thick in most areas, and it's usually fragmentary and wispy. As I was following this around, I'm looking at this stuff right here, and then there's a wisp of it sticking out this way that just kind of peters out, and then it continues up this way. This is the smooth muscle of the muscularis, and then notice it's petering out of existence right here. We lose it. So it's a discontinuous layer makes up the muscularis externa. 
This is connective tissue that's continuous with the core of the rude. So again, we call this lamina propria or submucosa. There's our smooth muscle of the muscularis externa. And then all this stuff out here is the serosa. Now, he doesn't have serosa on your list. And for those of you that get into the atlas, you may also see that the gallbladder also has an adventitia, depending on whether it's the side of the gallbladder that's up against the liver or not. Um, there's a piece of the serosa hanging off right there. But if you happen to get into a region where it's really super thick and super densely fibrous, you're probably into a, an adventitia. I don't think I have an adventitia here, although it looks relatively thick. The collagen fibers have been ripped apart in these areas. This is actually empty space, and the collagen fibers that are there are not densely packed. So this should still be a serosa instead of an adventitia. serosa on it. Out here, it looks like this is maybe in certain spaces a little bit more darkly staining, but still pretty pale. We can fit the whole thickness of the gallbladder in place here. And this looks significantly different from where we began. The epithelium, simple columnar epithelium right here, almost immediately below that, I can see that there's some smooth muscle and then we kind of lose it and we start to pick it up a little bit right here. And then this is connective tissue. So whether you call that submucosa or something else is up to you. And then the adventitious hanging against the outer surface right there. So the gallbladder is kind of a weird slide. Um, he'll pick one that you can clearly see the boundaries between. And if he wants you to identify the muscularis, he'll pick an area where it's nice and thick instead of the thin one that's here. It's gone in this area. This is all connective tissue. There's a bit of smooth muscle right here. Arcing over. And then we lose it again. So the gallbladder is weird that way. And then it has that discontinuous muscular layer. Did I hit everything for this one, you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's only three things. Any questions about this one? Well, we might as well do one more. Uh